Okay, so I would just like to talk about the full endoscopic spine surgery on the cervical spine. So I did more than 1,000 surgeries on the, on the lumbar spine, and um, we started with this uh, lumbar spine endoscopic surgery in the late uh, 90s. And after I have a lot of experience in the lumbar spine endoscopy, we just also started with the cervical spine. Because usually when you have um, cervical disc herniation, you have different kinds of disc herniation. You may have some calcified, also with the OBLL, you may have lateral disc herniation, medial disc herniation, and you have uh, also um, many, many levels. So when you have a disc herniation, so you need to decide what is the best approach. Should you go from ventral or should you go from, from dorsal? The problem is when you go from ventral, so usually you need to pass the disc to the posterior part where disc herniation is. So in the lumbar disc surgery, you will never do this. So every time you will go from, from dorsal uh, because you have not so much problems to, to medialize the nerve root and to reach the disc herniation. In the, in the cervical spine, it's uh, more uh, difficult because you have the spinal cord, which cannot be displaced. But the problem is when you go from ventral, so you need to remove the disc uh, at first, and then you will reach the disc herniation, remove the disc herniation, and then you will have a hole. And the question is what to do with the hole. And uh, usually you will place a um, cage or a, a artificial disc, so you will have an implant. So um, better is when it is possible to go from, from dorsal. And uh, when you go from dorsal, usually we use um, in the first time the endo, uh, microscopic technique. So we need to remove a little bit of the uh, facet joint. So we have some risk of destabilization. Yeah, so this is uh, how we do the usually microscopic uh, for anatomy. So you see the interesting part is here <coughs> because there we do the surgery, but we need to expose much more, even with the microscope, because we use instruments and we need to have some space for the instruments so we can work with the instruments. So we need bigger exposure than usually necessary. So to, to work with the forceps, to work with the suction, to, to have the, the, the rongeurs. So this is our surgical field and this is the exposure what we need even to be able to work with the instruments in the depths. So the problem is that we need a bigger incision. We need to go through the muscles. So we just need to, to uh, use some retractors and then we will have some pressure on the muscles. We will have some um, hypoxia to the muscles, maybe also some bleedings in the muscles. So we will have uh, postoperative um, neck pain and also the risk of uh, kyphosis due to joint resection. So the better option may be to minimize the approach and the way to minimize the approach is the, the endoscope. Um, the position of the patient is the same than in the microscopic surgery. So we have this spoon position, we use the Mayfield clamp, and we use um, C-arm lateral view. So we have here the station for the C-arm and then the endoscope. And we just minimize the, the visual field to this where we also do the surgery. So the procedure is the same, but much more located and smaller. So we have only a small visual field. So we can see this in these pictures. So we see some parts of the dura, we see the nerve roots and we go through the axilla. So it's different from the lumbar disc uh, surgery where we go uh, over the shoulder. So here we go through the axilla and then we can reach the disc herniation and remove the disc herniation. So we have nice instruments to do it. So I usually start with this uh, oval bore uh, drill, and then we can also use uh, diamond uh, ball drills. So really the same 
uh, instruments which we use in uh, microscopic uh, disc surgery of one anatomy, but smaller. So we have also different rangers, forceps, punches. So really, really nice, nice instruments which are very, very small, so we can minimize uh, the approach. So at the beginning, usually we use more X-ray to to um, see where we are to control our instruments. With more experience, you will use less less uh, X-rays, just only to to verify the level, uh, and then we we'll also only use the the, the uh, screen for the for the endoscope. So. This is a picture how we do it. So we have the, the flavor ligament, we have the lamina here, and the facet joint would be here. So we start to drill a little bit off from the lamina. So we start with this overall. Well, then we can use the scissors to open the, the flavor. So it's like in the lumbar endoscopic disc surgery. Yeah, we can see we minimize the approach to this interesting area. So we don't need to expose the other structures, what we usually do in microscopic surgery. So we use the uh, radiofrequency. Dirk uh, explained how or why it's better to use the four, four megahertz radiofrequency because we don't have so much uh, risk to, to injure nerve structures. Then we also the nice uh, rongeurs, so we can just resect boon also with rongeurs, so we can thin the boon with the uh, drills and the, the last uh, layers we can just remove with the rongeurs. And these are very, very sharp, two millimeters rongeurs and for, for this uh, cervical spine, it's really enough. Um, the difference uh, between the cervical endoscopic spine joint and the lumbar is that you always stay with the endoscope outside the spinal canal. Usually with this interlaminar approach, the lumbar spine, you will go with the sleeve inside and then you will just rotate the sleeve and, and, and uh, medialize the nerve root. This we will not do in the, in the uh, cervical um, endoscopic discharge. You can see the, the uh, Dura from the spinal cord, and here you can see the, the nerve root. Yes, so we have always this uh, 90 degree of, uh, from the nerve root axis. And then we can just incise the, the posterior ligament and resect the disc herniation. We can also decompress more the nerve root by removing a bit more of the boon. So when we have the opinion that there's still some boon, some, some uh, foramen stenosis. So, and then we can check it with the hook. I like it very much because sometimes there may be some discaniation uh, under the nerve root and you can mobilize discaniation from under the nerve root uh, with the hook and then you can uh, remove it. So, we do it in this step. So we start with the oval drill and then the diamond drill. And then we use these uh, rongeurs to remove uh, boon parts. We can also use dissectors just to uh, orientate where we are, where's the nerve root, uh, where's the spinal cord. We can also use the probe just to displace a little bit the, the, the fat, intra, uh, epidural fat and so on. So we can just um, see the structures and then we can remove Discaniation, and we can use hooks uh, just to try to mobilize uh, sequesters under the nerve roots or more, uh, or also under the spinal cord. So, uh, as an example, as you can see, it's really nice for these lateral discaniation. So, we have uh, especially four, six, or six, seven, because the interlaminar window is a little bit larger. When you go up, to, to three or three, four or four, five, so smaller in the lamina windows, so you need to drill a bit more, but it's also possible. So it's not a problem, but you need to know that you would need to drill a bit more. So we start with these uh, oval drills and we have this ball. So it was a little bit more 
boon, so not so much big windows, so we need to drill a bit more. Then we use these uh, bulgers to remove the last layers. You can see the epidural fat. You can always see the nerve root. Yeah, also this uh, protected oval drills. So when you already remove the um, yellow ligament and you need to drill a bit more just to protect uh, the dura, uh, you can use this uh, drills. So you can see the nerve root here. You can see the uh, dura of the spinal cord. So just Here's the disc herniation. So it's very easy when you have a free sequester, so you don't need to insist the along with the ligament. Oh, nerve root, dura from the spinal cord, epidural fat. And when you see it, so you may think it's uh, finished, but then it's always need to, to use the hook to check if there's um, some sequester left. And with the hook, you can really go under the nerve root and mobilize. You can see, oh, we can mobilize much more. So it's really very important to, to get all these parts uh, out because it's not good surgery when a patient has after surgery the same pain than before. Therefore, what you cannot see, you need to try to touch with the hook. Um, so you need to feel it, but with the hook, not with the finger. <laughs> yes, now the nerve is nicely compressed. So also last, last example, same procedure. At first, we just shrink the soft tissue to have a better exposure of the boon of the lamina and the facet joint. Then we start with the drill. So also lateral disc herniation. So we we'll start with the drill. So now we are inside the spinal canal. So we need to drill a bit more. Sometimes the, the boon is uh, too thick to get it out of the rogers. So we need to thin it. Um, so then we'll use the rogers to remove the last layers to see the nerve root. So we would just look with this uh, probe. We will just shrink a bit of fat. And I want them to open and close. And I will do an hour's worth of stuff and I will pay for the whole session. So you can see. Yeah. 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 I mean, that feels 100% enough because. No, no, you said that before. I, I mean, I think I'm going to just not do the extra NHS or yeah. not as much. Yeah. And so then you can remove the. the yeah. You've got to do it. You've got, uh, you've got to do it. Just to mobilize the last like parts, I'm check. I'm booked every weekend. Get all the parts out. Yeah, so that's finished. So oh, come on, if we have good indications for the um, endoscopic cervical disc surgeries or these lateral disc herniations, we have some borderline indications. So when the disc herniations, disc herniation is in the foramen, but also in the spinal canal, so we can grab it in the foramen and remove it uh, also from these medial parts. If it is possible. What we cannot do is when we have such really uh, boony foramen stenosis uh, and also with this medial disc herniation. Uh, okay, so thank you very much for your attention.